What's happening guys? Welcome back to another awesome Unity tutorial. I'm your host BliskinX and today we're going to look at knockback when a collision on enemy takes place. Now currently I do have a knockback uh, script that's enabled. I'm going to go ahead and just show you what that looks like and then I'm going to show you why it is I'm, I'm looking to redo that. It's not exactly the best approach moving forward but um, I do think that there is more of a global inheritable programming that I should be doing opposed to just making every enemy carrying this within its script. So currently if I have my enemy here and I knock him back, you'll see he's got a knockback there, but it isn't tidy, um, but it is something that is potentially working. Right, that I still need to fix for some reason, but there you can see it's, it's, it's a bit sticky and it's just really untidy. Now looking at the code, currently you'll notice that on my, on my player hit points over here, I'm currently using a tag called enemy, okay? So I created a new tag, I then went ahead and onto this specific um, slime guy, I went ahead and I added some functions. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. Double click slime follow, let my visual code open up here, my visual studio code. You'll notice that I've got this tag, that's this on trigger, um, enter 2D, and then I'm looking for that tag essentially, and then I'm working out the difference between that position and the other, and then I'm casting the player from that position to this difference, as you can see here with the Y and the X, the axes. Now, this is not, I would say, the best approach. I've been doing it for like this for some time, but I think there's just a more global approach to it, an inherited approach. Now, you'll notice another thing very critical that I wanna just point out. You'll notice that I'm using the enemy file here, the enemy class here. If I go ahead to my enemy file, and I'll sort of just show you a very important thing that that I've only learned uh, much later down uh, as I got into Unity, is that to set, uh, to have an enemy class where essentially you can have global variables, instant variables that are casted to all the enemies when, when inheriting this specific class, as I did here. As I inherited this class, you'll notice, and I'll sort of show what that looks like. If I go over to my inspector, uh, where's my little slime guy? If I click on the slime guy, you'll see I've got health, enemy name, base attack, the move speed. Instead of doing that for every single script, I went ahead and just cast the sort of called this file, the enemy file, uh, where I've got those ints and uh, strings set. I then uh, have the ability to make use of them here. So where I've got the moving of that position, you'll see the move speed is a variable that's in fact sitting within this class. Okay, so just a, it's, 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 it's an inherited program. It really helps when expanding the game that I just add this class to every single enemy and bam, I've got uh, you know certain elements that I'm going to need. So this is more of a global, you could say inheritance that uh, you need to be careful of. You don't wanna make uh, things that are linear or specific to a specific enemy rather make sure that it's the globe and the masses. Okay, so I wanna make sure I'm doing the same thing with regards to the knockback. And the knockback I wanna cast to the player. So I'm gonna go ahead and just remove this, you could say, tag to untagged, because I don't want that to be the case moving forward. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a new file. And I'm gonna call this new file, create a new C sharp. I'm gonna call this knock, uh, let's call it knockback. Okay, and this, this one we're going to basically cast on the player. That way it sticks to the player and whatever he does, everything that I tag moving forward will then have this knockback uh, effect, if you want to call it that. So I'm going to go ahead and just double click that and I'm going to need to go ahead and create a new trigger. Now, it's basically the same trigger moving forward as I have on the sign follow. So I'm just going to go ahead and just copy this, you could say, public void, and I'm going to use the two body uh, moving forward. Right, so the first thing I need to check is to see that the actual two body component, if I go ahead, yeah, you want to make sure that you keep a catch or an if or whatever it is that you, you prefer in your code to ensure that this slime does in fact have the two body, uh, the rigid body 2D enabled or at least present because if it runs through and it doesn't, obviously it will then break that code. So I'm going to go ahead and just check for that first. So the first thing that I want to do is obviously just create an if statement uh, calling that specific tag. And uh, we're gonna compare that. So we're gonna go if, and I'll tab that shortly. Uh, if, let's just do this. I like to always open and close my if, so I know that all the, the colons and everything is there. Um, other dot, I'm gonna go game object. Game object, the dot compare tag. And yeah, we're going to use that enemy tag. So, sorry, so yeah, we're gonna go enemy is what I called my tag. Um, which what I've had in my game previously. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make use of the same tag moving forward. Right, so yeah, we're gonna compare and then we're going to go and set the rigid body to a variable, which we can just call it the enemy, doesn't matter. So yeah, we're gonna go rigid body 
uh, body 2D. And we're going to say, let's call it enemy for now, just at the purpose of this demonstration, equals the other dot the get component, 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 and that will be the rigid body. Okay. So let's just do that. And that's going to be rigid, rigid body 2D. Okay, fantastic. So now that that variable is filled, we can go ahead and check and see if that variable is empty or not. So we're going to check and make sure before we cast our code that if enemy enemy is not equal to not equal to null, go ahead and perform your code. Right. So that is what we're saying here in this code. So now I can go ahead and obviously cast the difference, and I can do the things that I wanted to with regards to. Um, the specific tag being filled, if that makes sense. Okay, it just makes it a lot more global than 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 having it in, for instance, the slime script in my pass follow script, was, um, the slime pathfinder. Uh, I want all the enemies to have the same effect. That if I if I give them a knockback, I want it to apply to them. So it just makes it a lot more simpler looking for that tag. All right. So now that I've got that, I can go ahead and set um, the difference. So now we need to do a few things. Now currently I just want to make sure I've got the rigid body set to dynamic. I'm going to have to use schematic here um, because of the fact that this needs scripting. We can't apply force to this. So I'm going to have to turn this off uh, theoretically um, when I cast through these different states. So, because dynamic is really what I need in terms of to push back. You can't do it with, it uses what we call um, rigid body 2D. I looked in the documentation, uses an add force function, which we're going to make use of. So we're going to need that as um, schematic opposed to dynamic. Okay, so back to the code. Let's go ahead and do a few things. Um, so yeah, we're going to need to we're going to need to set that to um, false. Is schematic at first so that we can swap between those two two states. So we're going to go schematic um, equals false, and then is schematic equals false. Then we're going to need to go vector two, and then we're going to need to do the difference. Now I did that already over here on these line follows, as you can see. But I'm going to change this slightly. So we're going to go uh, difference, right? Let me just get the spelling right. Difference, uh, stop it. Difference equals. We're going to go enemy dot transform dot position. And we're going to subtract the transform, transform dot position. Okay. Go ahead and just. I wonder if I should put that in a text now. That you like. Then I'm going to say difference. Uh, difference. Now I want to. I want to multiply it by a, a percentage. So let's go difference. Oh, stop it. Difference. Right. Um, equals the difference in its normalized as it's normalized obviously difference dot normalized normalized and then we're gonna times that by the kickback distance that we're gonna want to use so let's go with maybe four four percent let's try that and see what happens this we could potentially do as a a global variable as a float uh, probably be better that way we can set it, but I don't think we're ever going to change it. So I don't think it's that it doesn't need to really be set, um, opposed to just making it static here for now. But we could do that later. So now we can go enemy and then we can go dot add. Uh, but I don't have the, I can't remember what it's called, add, um, add force, I think it's called, add force, that's right. And then we're going to go here, we're going to use the difference and check with force I think it's force 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 mode 2d that's right 2d dot impulse I think that should work and then the last thing is obviously change the state back to uh, schematic so I'm gonna go enemy again dot is I need to get my my my, my IDE sorted out correctly here with all the correct libraries so it just pops up it's true Right, so that should now work. So yeah, we're currently checking the tag enemy. We then obviously check it to see that the rigid body is in fact added to the uh, enemy. We then just making sure that it's not null. Then we perform our, our changing the um, 
the state, as I said here, in terms of the on the rigid body itself, making sure that we go from um, from where is it? Rigid body, yeah, the body type. Then we're making sure that that is set to false. That so goes straight into dynamic by default, and that we then furthermore um, turning it back on once we've calculated the distance and forced him back. So let's go and try and file save that for now. I might have to. He might float off because the the of the gravity. So that saved with no errors, which is a good thing. But let's go and see what it does. Because he might come through this wall as well, because he's got no collider. So, okay, so that's normal. That's fine. Uh, and if I kick back, nothing. Okay, now the reason for this is because we haven't gone ahead and set the tag. So over, and we haven't actually added the player script. Sorry, what am I saying? So down over here, I'm just going to go ahead and add this not back script over here. Fantastic. I'm going to just undo that, sorry. Add the not back script. And then I'm going to go ahead and play it. Now, I think the enemy, we did have the tag set. So let's go ahead and look and see what that does. And there you'll see he moves back to slightly, which is a good thing. Now, this is, he's forever moving because of the fact that I, 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 he's got the, the gravity is, is not right. So this is a bit strange. I'm just going to run that again one more time just to make sure that it is, in fact, pushing him back. That's what I want to make 100% sure without touching him. Okay, that is not working as intended. Okay, let's go ahead and add, let's go ahead and just change the state to dynamic first, and then we can, we can then um, worry about that later. Let's have a look and see if this does anything different. Right, so yes, a player. Okay, that is a bit better. Okay, so you'll see, obviously now that it goes into that state of dynamic, it's obviously, as you can see, it changed back. We need to do some a little bit of uh, more tailoring. Okay, so now we know that the the knockback is theoretically working, but we need to we need to set a timer. We need to somehow tell it that it's now you you know after a certain amount of seconds come back and then don't um, go back to your normal patrolling position if you want to call it that. So the best part here, I think, is we're going to need to need to add um, a timer. So let's go ahead and add a public float. Um, on this knockback. I'm gonna go public, uh, public float. And then I'm gonna say, um, we're gonna call this um, uh, knock, knockback uh, time. Okay, so that we, we know that the time between. Then we need to go and basically make some change here. So yeah, we're gonna need to add a coroutine. Now I do encourage you to go and look at coroutines. I'll sort of introduce it much later on, but it's pretty handy. Now, coroutines essentially, as you can see here, when you call a function that runs to completion before returning. So it'll run like a sub function essentially, but on the same uh, primary thread. So this is pretty awesome to do a quick calculation and then, then on return of that entire function, it will return the result. But it, this happens prior to the primary function completing. So go look into this. We're going to make use of a coroutine here, uh, just to give you an example. And yeah, we're going to, uh, just outside of this, we're going to type a new one. We're going to go private enum, private enumerator. Yeah, I can't get the spelling right. I wish I had my, I think it's enumerator, new, not number, uh, enumerator. And we're going to call this, um, let's call this, uh, let's just say, uh, knock back, and let's call it co. So we know that it is the co. And let's do that, right? And yeah, we need to obviously go ahead and pass the um, the rigid body 2D, uh, which we currently have. So yeah, we're just going to go open and close, and let's just do that. And yeah, we can go and pass the rigid body. So it's going to be rigid body 2D and enemy because we're passing it through here, obviously to do something. Then we just need to double check and just a fallback, obviously just to make sure that it's always null. It's always good practice. So let's just go enemy, just to check if the, the vector is in fact null. So we're gonna go enemy, enemies not equal to null. Right, then perform the function. So yeah, we're just gonna wanna set the time. We're gonna wanna return a hill here. Let's do that quickly. So yeah, we can basically, it's just really simple as we've done in our other videos. We're just gonna go heal, return, new and we're going to say wait for the seconds that's how long we want to wait and we're going to set the knockback time so we can go yeah and 
knock back time. Right, so that we're gonna wait. So while it waits there, then we basically wanna say enemy, because I wanna set the velocity now to zero on that character so he doesn't slide off the screen like that. Velocity, uh, velocity equals, I think it's vector two or three, it's probably vector two, yeah. Uh, vector two dot zero, and then we can set, um, actually we can go ahead and just copy this straight out here. Go and paste that there, and we can then call the curve. And that's really simple. So yeah, we just go start, um, start is it start function? Um, I think it's start, start routine. Uh, start coroutine, that's right. Coroutine, and uh, that would be the, um, the knockback dot co, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I can just go ahead and close it off. Yeah, start routine. I think that's right, start, I'm not too sure on this, I'd have to just double check this, I think it's start coroutine, coroutine knockback co, which is the function that adds, obviously the enemy, which is body that we're filling, that get component, we be passing it through, we're checking if it's null, we're waiting the seconds on the knockback time that we will go and set, and then we are setting the velocity to zero, and then setting the body type back to the schematic. All right, let's go ahead and file save that. Now I could get this wrong, this could break, I'll just double check. Okay, it says I thought it did break. I should do some more due diligence. So there's my problem. So file save. Try and do these videos as quick as I can. And uh, that should be fine. Fantastic. I'm gonna go ahead and just set this quickly. We've got this knockback now. So we're gonna set that to zero point, point maybe four. And uh, let's go ahead and test that. Let's go ahead and test our theory. So here's our player. Yep, here he is. Oh, much better. Comes back. Much better. Now the beautiful part about this is, is that uh, he's probably gonna, if I hit him, he's probably gonna slide off screen still. No, that's perfect. Okay, that is exactly what I wanted. Stunning. Now the beautiful part is I just get to set this tag. Yeah, here we go. Let's say for instance we take this enemy here on the pathfinder. I'll just go ahead and set this tag of this enemy now to to basically enemy as we've done there. And then we inherit obviously these functions that we've now set on the knockback that it applies because some enemies you might not want to knock back if it's a massive enemy or something. All right guys, so that is our video for today. Thanks so much. If you're new to this channel, always give us the subscribe and the like button. We always appreciate the love. And obviously if there's better ways of me doing it, please share. I try and do as much research as I can. Uh, finding better approaches at things as you saw I had the previous approach and then I went ahead and uh, found a better approach at doing it and uh, obviously um, It's always going to be a better way of doing it, you know, so always be open to learning and we'll catch you guys in the next one